Hey everybody, this is Patrick Ryan, Education Coordinator at the Buffalo History Museum, and today we're doing another one of our EOS videos. Behind me, as you can see, is the French Connection, and we're going to be talking about their original home, Buffalo's very own Memorial Auditorium. Sports have always been ingrained into the culture of Western New York, and the city of Buffalo has played host to professional leagues dating back to the early 20th century. In a city that has undeniably been influenced by their Canadian neighbors to the north, Many children in Buffalo are given a hockey stick and taught to skate as soon as they can walk. The supposed American pastime, baseball, was instead replaced by a love for goals, acrobatic saves, and a longing for the elusive Stanley Cup. Buffalo needed a place to enjoy their pastime, and in 1939, the people of Western New York got their wish. As part of a WPA project to combat the Great Depression, War Memorial Auditorium was constructed at 140 Main Street in downtown Buffalo. The newly built arena replaced an aging and decidedly too small Buffalo Broadway Auditorium that was constructed in 1898. The odd was built for $2.7 million and was officially opened to the public on October 14, 1940. The first event ever held at Memorial Auditorium was actually a political rally for Republican presidential candidate Wendell Wilk. Soon after, however, the venue began to play host to the new sport of basketball that was conceived by Dr. James Naismith. A game between Canisius College and Oregon on December 11, 1940 marked the first official sporting event that took place at the Odd, and the arena's 12,000-person capacity was put on full display. Hockey has always been Buffalo's lifeblood, however, and the AHL awarded the city a team the year that Memorial Auditorium opened. Nicknamed the Bisons, they were the second professional hockey team to play in Buffalo. The Buffalo Majors of the American Hockey Association also played in Buffalo, but they were disbanded by the league due to poor performance in 1932. The Bisons played in Buffalo for 30 years at the Odd and served as the AHL affiliate to the Montreal Canadiens, New York Rangers, and Chicago Blackhawks. Buffalo's AHL team found immediate success, including five Calder Cups during their time in Buffalo. The voice of Rick Jenneret first rang through the Queen City in 1969 when the future Hockey Hall of Famer made his first foray into broadcasting as the Bisons commentator. The Bisons left Buffalo after the 1969-1970 season, but not before winning one last Calder Cup trophy. The on-ice success and high attendance that the Bisons had enticed the NHL to award Buffalo their own franchise in 1970. That same year, the NBA took note of Buffalo's love for college basketball and awarded them their very own team as well. Upon their arrival, the Sabres and Braves garnered massive support, and the sports-crazy city of Buffalo embraced their new teams with open arms. Memorial Auditorium was now 30 years old and required massive updates in order to house two professional franchises. In 1971, one year after the Sabres and Braves came to Buffalo, Memorial Auditorium was overhauled. The project cost almost $9 million and the arena was largely expanded. Over 5,000 new seats were added and now the odd touted a capacity close to 17,000. A brand new state-of-the-art scoreboard and repainted seats added unique charm to an arena that severely needed an update. Unlike many other arenas, the Odd featured color-coded seating in each of the four sections. Those who wanted to be closer to the action could spend the extra money on cushioned gold-level seats. By 1975, after a handful of smaller renovation projects, Memorial Auditorium could boast a capacity of close to 18,000 fans. During the 1970s, Memorial Auditorium played host to the now legendary French Connection line, made up of the dazzling Gilbert Perrault, the incredible playmaker René Robert, and the late great goal scorer Rick Martin. When the Sabres weren't playing, Buffalonians retreated to the on-court wizardry at NBA MVP Bob McAdoo and All-Stars Adrian Dantley and local hero Randy Smith. The Sabres' success in the 1970s, including making the playoffs seven straight years, as well as a Stanley Cup Finals appearance against the Philadelphia Flyers in 1975. Even though the French connection came up short of their ultimate goal of being crowned champions, the early success of the Buffalo Sabres at Memorial Auditorium solidified their position in the Buffalo community for the next 50 years. The Buffalo Braves, however, were not so lucky. Never winning more than 22 games in a season during their first three years in the NBA, the Braves did find middling success in the mid-1970s, including three straight playoff appearances. After a trip to the 1976 NBA Conference Semifinals, the Braves had finally drawn crowds equal to about the league average. 
Unfortunately, it was too little too late. Braves owner Paul Snyder found himself at odds with both Sabres management and local basketball programs, and scheduling Braves games at the odd became more and more difficult. Snyder saw the writing on the wall. Attendance was plummeting, and in 1976, the Braves traded MVP Bob McAdoo for John Gianelli in cash considerations, in a move that had more to do with financials than on-court success. The following year, Snyder attempted to sell the team to a Floridian hotel baron who planned on moving the team to Miami. In response, the city of Buffalo filed a suit to block the move and signed the Braves to a 15-year contract to continue playing at Memorial Auditorium. Bad teams and low attendance, however, spelled doom for the ill-fated franchise. The team was finally sold, and new owner John Y. Brown Jr. effectively cut ties with the city of Buffalo in 1978. In an interesting bit of backdoor NBA dealing, Brown traded franchises with the owner of the Celtics, Irv Levin. Levin, a native Californian, then proceeded to move the team to San Diego, marking the end of professional basketball in Buffalo. Memorial Auditorium had lost one of its most important attractions, but the Sabres' continued success in the next decade drew close to league-high attendance in the early 1980s. Memorial Auditorium, however, was approaching 50 years old by this point, and one last round of renovations took place inside its historic walls. The city of Buffalo knew that the only way to keep their beloved hockey franchise in Buffalo was to give them a proper, more modern home. The last renovations to the odd, which included some new seating and an improved air conditioning system, required the Queen City to take out loans to complete the project. The Knox family, which owned the Sabres, made it clear that Memorial Auditorium had outlived its shelf life, and talks of a new arena being built commenced in the 1990s. In its final years, the Odd played host to a plethora of Sabres legends, including the NHL's top goalie and Vesna Trophy winner, Dominic Hasek. In 1996, Memorial Auditorium closed its doors for the final time, and the Sabres played their final game there against the Hartford Whalers April 14, 1996. Following its closure, the Sabres, Bandits, and short-lived Buffalo Blizzard of the NPSL were moved into their new home. Marine Midland Arena, now known as Key Bank Center. Memorial Auditorium was then effectively abandoned after rumors of Bass Pro Shop buying the old stadium never came to fruition. In 2007, the city of Buffalo sold the odd to the Erie Canal Harbor Development Corporation. Memorial Auditorium was finally fully demolished in the early 2010s and the once legendary sporting site now plays host to Buffalo's canal side attractions.